Hi, I'm Wynn Dunwell, University of Kentucky Department of Horticulture, professor for nursery crops. Today we're going to have a little video discussing some issues related to substrates and long-term care of plants in containers. This video is hosted by the Kentucky Integrated Pest Management Program, which is funded by USDA NIFA. So we thank them for this uh, equipment to do this with. So some of the things we wanted to talk about is, is watering. So you want to water your containers in a fashion that allows the plant to have the water it needs without excess. Unfortunately, for many of us, we automatically irrigate, maybe with overhead irrigation in a container yard or in a greenhouse with, again, overhead or uh, irrigation nozzles that are mounted to uprights. In either case, if the plants are mixed up, some will have a high level of use and others will have a low level of need. So one of the things you might take a look at is the Southern Nursery Association Best Management Practices. This is the third edition. It's readily available online and I will put the link in the description of this video. Um, it's very useful and it has tables that describe the amount of water that different plants need, whether it's low, medium, or high requirement. So it's a very useful publication. Uh, I went ahead and brought a plant that has struggled. Um, it's a bottle brush buckeye. It does not require an extensive amount of water or in, maybe I should say it, it ne won't necessarily tolerate an excessive amount of water in our, a container. We grow red buckeyes, yellow buckeyes, and bottle brush in containers, and we don't have this problem with the yellow or the red. And the problem is, is in this pot, which it's been in for a while, if you try to pull the plant out, you will find that you don't have a significant good root system here. So I'm pulling it out, and this plant has some white, nice white roots. It seems to be doing okay, but it's struggling. And the problem is the, the media down in the bottom, and there is some white roots down in the bottom, is too wet. So the plant can't grow down in that wet soil. Uh, wet, in this case, pine bark. So. This plant has recovered somewhat from struggling earlier in the season. We can see it's got good roots going, so that's a positive. So maybe it will do all right, but we're going to go ahead today, thanks to my use, abuse of it, and repot it. Okay. This is a, a malice. It's in a very small pot, and it's got roots coming out the bottom, and as long as they're in contact with soil, it's good to go. But if we take this off, we find bone dry, bone dry. The problem with that is you cannot re-wet that without the use of some sort of a surfactant or wetting agent. Be sure if you do decide after you've repotted this to try to get this wet, you might use a material such as that. But be sure it is for live plants. There are wetting agents which are detergents that are pretty tough on plants. So we use AquaGrow, but there's other materials that you can use. But you can see that plant needs immediate repotting, and if left in the irrigation, that one's too wet. This one's too dry. They're both under the same irrigation regime on a daily basis. So we want to be careful with that. We also need to repot that. Okay. So when we're talking about media, the texture of the media makes a difference. Um, if the texture is very fine, like our potting soils that we buy at our local retail outlets or even commercially, such as uh, different types of peat-based substrates. They can become very wet, they're very fine textured, and they need to be managed. 
uh, in a way that is an irrigation system and growing system for fine textured substrates. If we use pine bark, pine bark is a coarse type substrate and water can go run straight through it. So we need to maybe even amend it or irrigate it more frequently so that it doesn't dry out like that pot we just looked at for the witch hazel. I have a few notes and I am going to check with them every once in a while. And I also wanted to note that on the bottle brush buckeye that down in the bottom of the pot it is quite wet. And that layer is typical of a layer that retain, retains water under steady irrigation systems. That area limits root growth. So Jim Owen and James Altlin at the USDA ARS Research Center in Worcester are planning on coming up with a program to utilize different medias in the same pot. So put a coarser media in the bottom so that it drains readily and the root systems can survive in that area without having any kind of root rots or being unable, unable to grow in the saturated media in the substrate. Ooh, don't say media. Substrate in the bottom of the pot. So their, their plan is to use a coarser material in the bottom and a finer material in the top where it drains readily in the top and then improve the drainage in the bottom. Now many people will say, well, we do that. We put gravel in the bottom of the pot. Well, that's not the same thing. That material is not a substrate that the roots can grow in. That is a, a drainage enhancement, and you still have the potential for water to be trapped in the media above the gravel uh, where it has water holding capacity. Keep in mind, we have to have air space and water space uh, for container capacity for water and air space for roots development to grow in. If we don't have air space, of course, we'll drown the plant. I know that sounds pretty weird, drowning a plant, but it's very possible. Also, in irrigation systems, you have to check the plants. Here we have three different plants that were all basically in the same place. This one has totally dried out. These are uh, uh, Amsonia, I'm sorry, Amsonias that I was growing. Uh, this one has been repotted, this one was not, and this one was not. So the one that was repotted and was placed back in the greenhouse under irrigation in the middle of a group of plants is doing very well, as are most of the others. So I will take it out of the way, it's doing fine. This one, on the other hand, is on the outside of the greenhouse where these plants, these healthy, tall, vigorous plants, are blocking water getting to this plant. And this plant was not repotted, but it's, this one wasn't either. Of course, this is a very small plant comparatively. This plant is on the inside of the shade house. This one's on the outside. Sun gets to this area, and it's also blocked from getting the water from the irrigation system by the taller plants. So you have to check your plants regularly. This could have been watered from the outside by hand, and typically we do recommend that anyone who grows plants has someone go out and check the plants on a periodic regime in order to be sure that they're all getting water. Okay, so, We had this plant, you remember, sort of root bound. You see these roots, not much white going on there. Root bound and dried out. So we're gonna repot that plant and hope we can salvage it because it's a plant that's important to us. So here we have some plants that we think are doing fairly well, but I haven't knocked them out of the pot to know that that's the case. This is a yellow wood, it was cut off. Uh, to sprout up and put a nice straight trunk on it. Let's take a look at how it looks. It was repotted this spring. And, well, there we go. Okay, fresh pine bark allows for drainage at the bottom of the pot, normal irrigation regime, and we have roots in the bottom of the pot, which, if this plant didn't utilize that water, 
we wouldn't have. So this is what I would consider to be a good plant, healthy, vigorous plant with a good root system that we will repot again into a seven gallon this fall. Well, of course, maybe we'll do it now. But in any case, and let's see how this one's doing. This is a sawtooth oak. It was not repotted, but it is putting out good, healthy roots, doing well. It was repotted after last year, uh, last fall. So it's doing fairly well. We do have a little bit of dampness down here, so it's not utilizing all the water that it could, but still, it's a good, healthy plant. I'm happy with that plant, and we will repot it and bump it up to a, probably a three or five gallon. All right, so what are we doing? If we leave plants in containers, they need to be managed. Uh, we can end up with very dry soils, root bound. We don't uh, prefer not to have that occur. If we can repot on an annual basis, move them up, or in some cases, if you're maintaining a plant collection and you have a plant that you want to maintain in that size container, you, well, the camera decided to turn off. I don't know why, uh, but in any case, we were talking about repotting. As you know, we can grow bonsai in very small amounts of substrate. We can repot plants that are in a container back into the same container for displays and for our patios with substrate. We disrupt the root system a little bit, maybe even trim it somewhat, and then put it back into fresh media in order to ensure good drainage and adequate airspace for continued growth and enhancement uh, of the appearance of the plant. As we study the different types of media, keep saying media. I'm, gonna keep, I'm not going to start over. It's, it's not media. Media is a different material that's used for a different purpose. Substrate is the material that's put into a container in order for us to grow plants. When we talk about substrates though, I did want to bring up that uh, there's adequate research now on whole pine tree substrates and it's very interesting what that material is being used for. At North Carolina State University right now, Brian Jackson is one of the younger professors there who is working in this area and has received a great deal of mentoring from people that worked in this area previous to him. Uh, other universities, I already mentioned Jim Owen and James Altland at the USDA ARS working on this project. Uh, different types of substrates that can be adjusted with amendments. We here at the University of Kentucky are working on utilizing pig compost and hemp compost and chicken compost as additions to substrate in order to re enhance the water holding capacity. And the way we do that, pine bark, as I've already mentioned, is a very coarse material. Water runs straight through it and it has lots of air space. That's one of the things we love about it. And it doesn't break down too quickly. So we use pine bark as what's called pine bark fines, uh, even though it's chopped to a certain size category. And in order to reduce the uh, water loss, we can add amendments such as compost, substrates, or we can adjust the size of the whole tree pine uh, products that are being used. So we can take a coarse material and chop it up and make it finer. If it's coarse, it has lots of airspace and the water drains quickly. If, as it becomes finer and finer in its, in its particle size, water is more readily retained and we have less airspace. So it just depends upon what the plant's needs are on whether or not we do that. Certain plants, it's very good to enhance the pine bark with some sort of a other material. And we can use lots of things, so I won't get into that too much. But we do want to remind each and every one that as you adjust your production systems to different types of plants, get to know that plant, 
and adjust your particle size, your irrigation regime, and other management systems to fit that plant. And one of the things we do is we take plants that require a low amount of water and we group them together in an area which receives less irrigation. We take plants in the medium range of the water requirement, we put them all together, and then we apply the appropriate medium range of irrigation. And then we have plants that utilize an enormous amount of water and are known as heavy water users. We put those together and we irrigate accordingly at a higher rate. And this allows plants to not have the different types of excessive watering damage or drying out. So we try to accommodate the irrigation to the substrate and the plant. Finally, we want to be sure we've adjusted particle size, we've adjusted our irrigation, we've repotted, we've done everything, that someone goes out and checks the substrate to ensure that it's adequately moist and has adequate airspace for the plants. So this is part of a lean system to have someone periodically go out and check. And if they see a plant starting to brown on the outside of a shade house or a greenhouse or out in the field and the plants on the inside are still doing well, obviously those plants on the outside need a little more water and probably it will have to be applied by hand or we overwater the whole area. So we hope that you will be able to grow quality plants by adjusting your particle size of your substrate, adjusting your irrigation, and having someone go out and check. Now you may wonder what I'm doing out here with the uh, rubbing my hands and arms. Uh, there's mosquitoes out here, and I hadn't uh, brought along a mosquito spray, so we're having to deal with that.